In this video, I'd like to go over the two main types of data and how we might be able to determine whether or not data from a survey or a sample is qualitative or quantitative. We'll end up talking about the levels of measurement, how we end up measuring that data. So the two main types are qualitative and quantitative. And if you look inside the word qualitative, it's telling you what type of data it is. It describes a quality. It is a quality. This is also called categorical. And when we talk about the quality of something, it is describing. Okay, so this is a description of data. So it could be describing someone's trait. So if we have some examples here, examples might be eye color. Uh, another example of a qualitative data is gender. These are all qualities either of an individual or if we think about, um, let's say, letter grade on a final exam. These aren't numbers. They are things that are describing something or their categories. Eye color, gender, or letter grade are just three types. Something else that we're going to talk about soon is something like an account number. So your bank account number would actually be something a qualitative, it's categorical. And we're going to see why shortly. The other main type here is quantitative. And when we talk about quantitative data, we are talking about a quantity. So the word quantity is right in there, quantity. This is also known as numerical because they are numbers. All right. Just because you have numbers, it's not assumed automatically it's quantitative. There are some other questions we have to consider. But quantitative, if it is quantitative, it's absolutely going to be a number. So if you see numbers, it may be quantitative, could be qualitative, depending on what it's describing. But anything that is quantitative will have a number for sure. Now, it's a quantity, it is numerical, and it, it is you get these results by counting or measuring. Counting or measuring. You get something like if you count, and we list some examples here, if we count the number of children that a family has, so number of children, that would be the result of counting. Um, it could be your um, percent grade in statistics. Not your letter grade, but the percentage. It could be your height or weight. These are things that are a quantity and they are measured or you count them. There are two main types of quantitative data. One is, and I'm going to write them up here, but we're going to talk more about them on the next page. It's a discrete and the other is continuous. So these are the two types of quantitative data. There are two types, discrete and continuous. And we're going to see right now on the next page whether or not a quantitative, if we gather quantitative data, how do we tell if it's discrete? How do we tell if it's continuous? On this page, we're going to use a flow chart to help us to determine whether or not we are dealing with qualitative or categorical, or if we're dealing with quantitative or numerical data. The first question we need to ask ourselves is, are there numbers? If the answer is no, you're going to be working with qualitative. We are talking then about qualitative data, which we also know to be categorical. So for example, if we are talking about someone's favorite color, we're talking blue, red, orange. These aren't numbers, right? This is data that's in a column or get dat data that we're gathering that is not being represented as numbers. Therefore, it's automatically going to be qualitative or categorical. If the answer is yes, as we saw in the last slide, that doesn't mean it's automatically quantitative or numerical. What we have to ask ourselves is, okay, we see these numbers, but are these numbers measuring something or are they result of counting? In other words, we did see some qualitative data here. We saw a count number. 
in that particular case, we're not measuring our account, right? We're not measuring an account. Or if you think about, let's say, jersey numbers on the back of uh, baseball players or basketball players, if someone wears number two, right? Derek Jeter wears number two. That doesn't mean he's the second player. He, that's not necessarily measuring in a qual. Excuse me, it's not measuring a quantitatable fact about him. What that is is just it's a category. It is describing Derek Jeter as player that wears number two. So it's more categorizing him. So if the answer is no, then those numbers are going to be or those yeah those numbers are going to be qualitative. So jersey numbers, account numbers, those are things that aren't measuring a player's ability or measuring your bank account, they are using those as a categorizing feature. If the numbers are measuring something, so for example, number of children that somebody has, or the length of a beam in a steel building, these examples are the result of counting or measuring. So if the answer is yes, these numbers are measuring something or the result of counting, then we know it's going to be a quantitative, and let me get back to the pencil here, it's going to be a quantitative or numerical set of data. So quantitative or numerical. Now we can go one step further. If it's quantitative or numerical, we need to think about whether or not it is discrete or if it is continuous. So is it possible to be more precise with a better tool of measurement? If the answer is yes, then we're dealing with continuous data. Continuous numerical data is describing sample data that can be put on a spectrum where you can get more precise if you had a better tool. So for example, if we were measuring weight, right, you have an infinite number of possibilities. I might go on my scale upstairs and get a particular weight, or I could go to NASA and get a, a more precise measure of my weight. So the idea here is, can we see, can we go in between, let's say, the values of we use weight 100 and 181? We're not on whole numbers. We could have 180.2, 180.23333. If they have an unlimited number of possibilities, this is going to be related to continuous data. If you can't get more precise, in other words, you're going to have a particular measurement regardless of how precise the instrument is, then that's going to be related to discrete data. So the example that I used on the last page was number of children. It doesn't matter if you have the most precise instrument. We are dealing with zero, ch chi uh, zero children, one child, two children. These are whole numbers, zero, one, two, three. We're not going to have 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.7. We are having whole number possibilities. If you think about the number of times you went to the doctor, these you didn't go half of a time. So discrete is talking usually about whole numbers. We do want to be careful, though, because something like shoe size would actually be discrete. Shoe size, you have 10, 10 and a half, 11. These aren't going up by ones, but they're going up by halves you don't have a shoe size of 10.2 or a shoe size of 10.7. These are measurements here, 10, 10.5. You have multiple steps that you're going up in a, in a pattern. All right? So continuous is looking at something you really could have an unlimited number of possibilities if you had a, a tool that could measure it. Where discrete, it doesn't matter how good that tool is. If it's at the result of just counting something, or it's describing something in terms of steps, then that would be considered discrete. The last slide is talking about levels of measurement. How are we able to measure these various types of data? So when we talk about nominal, when we say nominal data, this is associated with a categorical type of data that can't be ordered. So there's no natural order. No natural order. So example, if you have your eye color, this would be, let's say we had blue, we had green, we had brown. We'll just list those three. Okay, th we sample 100 people, and these were the results that we got. We got some people who had blue eyes, green eyes, and brown eyes. 
This is nominal variable because we can't put blue, green, or brown in a natural order. It's just blue, green, or brown. All right? They could be blue, green, or brown, or brown, green, and blue. It doesn't necessarily matter. There's no natural order. Now, if you think about something such as ordinal, ordinal is usually when we're categorizing things in steps. So you might see, let me write something down here, this would be a natural order. A natural order. So for example, you might see something that talks about whether or not uh, if you selected your jersey number. Let's say we were sampling baseball players or basketball players and they had to select their jersey number. We already talked about that this particular type of data would be considered quanti or excuse me, qualitative because it's not measuring something. Well, if you put that in, we could put that in order. One, two, zero, one, two, three, so forth. That is, has a natural order to it. So ordinal, meaning it has a natural order. When you talk about these two types, nominal and ordinal, these are typically associated with the categorical type. Categorical. When we look at interval and ratio, these are more associated with numerical or quantitative. So these are more associated with the numerical. The level of measurement here matters because nominal and ordinal, if, if we're talking about nominal da data or ordinal data, we can't calculate statistics for that. When we're not going to be able to find the mean of this, blue, green, or brown. If I tried to find the mean of that or the average, I wouldn't be able to do that. And we'll be soon talking about mean and average. You can't do that. You could for jersey numbers, right? You could add up and find the average jersey number, but that's not really, it doesn't have any practical meaning. It's not telling us anything. Interval and ratio, we will be able to actually compute some things. So if we have interval and ratio, we could find the mean, we could add and subtract the values, and they would have practical significance. So when we talk about interval, the main difference between interval and ratio is whether or not there is a quote-unquote natural zero. So with interval, there is no natural zero. And with ratio, there is, there is a natural zero. When we talk about natural zero, ask yourself this question. If we get a zero, if, so if we talk about zero, does that mean there is no measurement of that particular data? Or does it just mean something else? So for example, let's say we were talking about temperature and you got a reading of zero degrees Fahrenheit. Does that zero degrees Fahrenheit mean there's literally no temperature? No, right? Zero degrees Fahrenheit is still measuring something. It's still a measure. So in that particular case, there is no natural zero because a measure of zero doesn't mean a lack of that particular variable. So here, for example, we would talk about temperature because temperature, we can have zero and it doesn't mean a measure of it's missing that particular type. It just means that is one measure. Ratio, there is a natural zero. In other words, when we talk about zero, it means there is a lack of that particular value. So when we talk about the number of children that somebody has, if you say zero, that literally means there is no children. Or you talk about your blood pressure, and that blood pressure is zero. That literally means there is no blood pressure, okay, zero. So zero means a lack of something. That's when we talk about a ratio. The difference between these and why we have to, to decipher between the two is because with ratio, when we talk about ratio, then typically what we can do is we can multiply and divide and it makes sense. Sometimes you can with interval as well. You just have to be a little bit careful. But we can, when we talk about interval, add and subtract. But with ratio, add and subtract is fine. It's whether we can multiply and divide and whether that makes sense. What I would recommend is in the module here that we have that you're watching this video in, there are other videos down below. If you're still unsure of these various definitions, then I would recommend watching them. And if you're still unsure, post your video, or excuse me, post your questions to the discussion board. See if other students can answer them, and I will be um, looking in there as well to hopefully answer your questions as well.